best teams face off in the championship between UConn and Purdue. Let's dive into some of the film of what could just make this a fantastic matchup. All right, so we, we have to start with the post defense and what UConn can do against Purdue and Zach Eady. So we're going to go through here, and UConn kind of has stayed one-on-one -on -one for a lot of the season. And you're going to see this here. Villanova clears out this entire side and just going to go one-on-one. -on -one. UConn, maybe they send a little guard um, to dig down, and you're going to see that a little bit here. But in the end of the day, this is just going to be one-on-one. -on -one. And this is what they've done for a large percentage of post-ups this season. However, none of those have come against Zach Eady. Now, if UConn does stay one-on-one -on -one against Edie, something Purdue and Edie has been so great at is the repost. So you're going to see he gets the ball here. Edie doesn't really like it. He doesn't like the spacing. He doesn't like kind of the positioning that he has. So he kicks it out. And now the ball immediately. Now he's just going to repost. And now you can see he kind of already has a feel of where the defense is going to be. There's a little bit better spacing this time. And so now he's going to catch and be able to go to work right away. And I would expect the repost to happen a lot in this game. And so then another thing that Purdue has been really good at is kind of just having ED seal in the middle of the paint. So ball screen up top, kind of congested. Is This play wasn't ran exactly, I think, how Purdue wanted. But the key thing is ED on the roll is going to seal his man in the middle. And so now he's going to catch here. He's catching in the middle, so it makes it harder to really double. And now he can just go to work and goes up. And I would expect Purdue to go to this a lot too. It's something that they go to a ton. Allow ED just to be able to work with some more spacing. Now, when UConn does double, there's a very specific way that they've tended to do it this entire season. So the ball's going to get into the post here, and it's always one of these like weak side wing defenders. So they don't, they haven't really doubled from the low man, and they have not doubled from the strong side wing. It's one of these two weak side wing defenders. They're going to basically 45 cut, come over and double, and then work from there. And now you can see UConn is in good position defensively to be able to rotate, and that's exactly what happens. As the ball gets swung out, it's going to be moving. And then UConn just, they do such a great job in general of closing out, forcing these tougher shots, and, and getting good results from it. Now, if UConn does decide to double, kind of with that, that weak side wing, Purdue has shown, especially with the shooters that they have this year, that unless you make Edie really be pushed out and be physical super, super early, they'll make you pay. And so this isn't quite the hard double, right, that UConn showed, but you can see here. Kind of this weak side wing defender really digs down into the into Edie, and Edie's just going to make the right pass. He's just going to make the kick out, get one of his 40-plus percent three-point shooters open, and let them knock one down. Now moving to UConn's offense, and they just have weapons everywhere, and they can attack you in so many different ways. And we're going to go through the pick and roll and kind of what they're able to create from it. It's not always just what the simple screen does, but what they're able to do elsewhere with it. And so on this play, it's going to be kind of in transition, right? So a little bit of a drag screen. And you're going to see this St. John defender, he's ball watching a little bit. He doesn't notice where his guy is. And so now as he's coming over to help a little bit um, on ball, that's going to leave Spencer wide open here. And yes, UConn has super complex sets and all of that. Sometimes it's very simple. Find an open guy, get a shooter, and let him go. Now defensively, Edie is going to do a lot of similar things to Klingon. And so kind of that ability to be in drop coverage, cover a lot of space, allows some of the Purdue guards to um, be more able to then be able to contest on the perimeter. So drop coverage here from Edie, right? Just kind of move him back. You're going to see a small tag from uh, Smith here on wall on the roll, but he's not going to get on the inside. And so as this, this kind of jump pass happens to Hepburn, now Smith's going to be able to actually close out. And that's because Edie just takes up so much space. So like Smith doesn't have to get on the inside of wall because Edie's going to take up that counter passing lane from between right here. And so now he's able to rotate out and help contest the shot. Now, one thing teams have tried to do at times is bring Fletcher Lawyer into the action. And so have his guy screen for the ball handler. And oftentimes, Purdue will have Lawyer kind of in this hedge look right here. Sometimes it will be a switch, but if they want to try to keep him off of a dynamic ball handler, then they'll just kind of go to more of this flat hedge, hedge type look. But what that will open up is kind of this backside. And so you're going to see Northwestern here gets the ball. Heidi has to kind of come up to help with this, and now it's one extra pass. Tough closeout. Barry's just going to pump fake and get the open three. So kind of getting Lawyer into the action, getting the defense to move is one way that offenses have kind of gone at Purdue. And so now as we go back to UConn's offense, we're going to see, right, another ball screen up at the top of here. And so as this ball screen happens, it's the off-ball movement that really creates a shot. So you're going to see... They're going to be setting some sort of like flare screen right here, um, trying to maybe get Caravan open for three. 
But then they just read the defenses so well. And Newton is such a, a good facilitator, understanding where his guys are going to go. And so it's a simple slip. And UConn will do this constantly, where they just find open gaps, realize, okay, my guy isn't really paying attention. I'm just going to cut to the rim. Now it's a dump off. Easy, easy, too. And so then on top of all the other options that UConn has, they also have Donovan Klingon rolling. And it just makes it really, really tough to guard. So we're going to flow through here. Going to get the ball screen up top. St. John's in drop coverage, so the big's going to be dropping back, keeping the ball handler and roller in front. And this is where, like, as a big, you as a big in the guards, right? Guard has to get through a little bit better to make this the big's job a little bit easier and allow him to get back. Also, a tag here on the roll of this guy stepping in and being able to kind of bump clean in a bit but still be able to get out. It's tough. It is very, very tough to do because UConn's offense just, they put you in such a bind. You kind of have to pick what spot you want to give up. And whatever they do, you do give up, UConn's probably going to take advantage of. But at the end of the day, Purdue is going to just try to give up mid-range shots. And so you're going to see here, high ball screen, Edie's going to be in his very deep drop coverage. So the first screen, Smith does a good job of getting through and actually keeping Walker in front. Second screen happens. Now Smith is caught behind. Edie again, drop coverage. You're going to see um, Gilson going to be rotated over a little bit, but... At the end of the day, these kind of long mid-range shots, that's what Purdue is fine giving up with, and that's what their defense is designed to do. And now we're going to switch over to the other side, where UConn's pick-and-roll defense against what Purdue is wanting to do. So in this play, we're going to start with UConn's defense. It's going to be empty side ball screen, nobody in this corner over here. And Klingon's going to be in that drop coverage. So he's going to be just kind of moving back, making sure to keep the ball handler and the roller in front. And this is where Klingon is so, so, so good, is he can be kind of both – helping disrupt the ball but also make that lob pass over the top to the roller like not really happen he's kind of able to eat up just so much space and what it allows is it, you can see these UConn guards there's some help there from Spencer for sure but it's not like they're having to crazy over help and so now they can kind of stick out to shooters a little bit more if there was a kick out UConn would recover and contest um, and Klingon just does such a good job of being the kind of the the cornerstone of all of that now, this is where it could be a bigger Brayden Smith game. And when we kind of talk about um, Purdue's drop coverage and how that kind of can open up shots for the point guard, the same thing goes to the other side. And so you're going to see here, high ball screen. Illinois is going to be in that drop coverage, kind of dropping their big back towards the rim. And what that is going to open up is this space. And you've, this has been a huge, huge jump for Brayden Smith this season, is being able to get to that level of, I'm just going to walk into the shot and knock it down. And he's going to do that here. You can see right kind of right here he's just looking to see where the defender's at he's like okay yeah i have him completely on my hip i'm just gonna rise up and knock this down and that's gonna be something that can be there this game against the drop coverage really for both sides now when johnson is in instead of clinging that's where you'll see more of like the high hedges and things like that and there's a way that can beat them but uconn also does a pretty good job usually of defending it so you're gonna see the screen here the big johnson's gonna be kind of up in this high hedge and so this is one of the few times, honestly, that UConn gets out of place. And so you have the roller, and you see Spencer dive in a bit. And now this kick out to the corner is going to happen. But this is kind of what they're willing to give up. And they're just banking on, A, they're going to leave the right shooters open. And they're also just going to be able to come out and contest. So, um, I mean, this is going to be a miss there. That's a shot that Purdue would take if they had it every time. But UConn's also pretty good at knowing when to allow those and when to not. And now UConn is very, very good defensively, and maybe Purdue's going to have to work harder than what I'm going to show here to get these types of looks, but these are the looks that can be there. I've showed the one against the drop coverage, and now I'm going to show the one against the hedge, and you're going to see here, uh, Purdue will run this kind of double ball screen type action at the top a lot, So, but then what's going to be noted is, is that second screen, and Edie slips it, but the big thing is that the big is going to hedge. And what Purdue does so great at is when there is a hedge is they put Gillis in the spot of being kind of at this top of the key, whether it be popping out, sometimes he'll be down here and kind of slip up to the top. And what that does is it puts the pressure on his defender. Is his defender going to stay on Gillis and force the low man right here to come over and tag and Edie's going to have the size, size advantage over most guys in that scenario, or does they stay with Edie and then like they do here? that's going to give Gillis a wide open three. So it's kind of a pick your poison. And like I said, UConn is very, very good defensively at it. Um, so they can contest these shots, but these are the looks that can be there for Purdue. And now any guard to guard screen like this up top, UConn is just going to switch and they're going to live with what happens there. And now what this also allows is if it is guard to guard is Klingon can now just really roam and protect the rim. So now Providence here is kind of isoing 
and they're going to get now to the rim. And this is where Klingon is just so elite, uh, being able to come over, contest, time shots, get blocks, and just be able to protect the rim. So on the perimeter, UConn will, is fine switching stuff, and they're fine funneling to, to Klingon. Um, they aren't a team that necessarily forces an insane amount of like floaters. Teams take shots at the rim. It's just Klingon's there, and he's going to disrupt a lot of them. And then flipping back to Purdue on offense, is this is something that Zach Eady has just improved on greatly. And then also Brainsmith being one of the better passers, one of the best passers in the entire country, also helps. So against the drop coverage here, you're going to see, like, if Smith is able to engage this big at all, it puts a lot of pressure on the low man. If he's able to engage the big even just a little bit, Smith knows that he kind of has Edie on this drop-off. Edie has done such a better job this season of being able to roll, catch on the move, and then also finish. I mean, the low man is there helping out Klesmit right here, but at the end of the day, Edie's just too big, and it's not going to matter. And now maybe the most fun thing to watch about UConn is just kind of their off-ball movement, their sets. Um, and same thing can kind of be said for Purdue, as both of these teams run some pretty complex sets. This one right here, staggered pin down for Spencer, and then he's eventually going to ghost this screen. All of this is going to set up then flex action, which is Spencer going to be setting this cross screen here and then immediately getting a pin down. So all of this kind of previous movement is setting up this part right here where Spencer is going to set a cross screen and now immediately come and get a pin down. And if you just leave any sort of space like happens here, Spencer's going to fire it up and he's been one of the best shooters in the country. He's going to knock it down. And now going at another play later in the same exact game, it's going to start out with a chin screen right here at the elbow, this back screen from Spencer, for Spencer, I mean, and then immediately flow into pin down. And this is something that I think Purdue struggles with at times of really being able to stay connected on screens. UConn, they are going to continuously, continuously run them off ball. And if you make any sort of mistake, they're going to get an open shot. And this, this kind of off ball movement defense is something that Purdue has really struggled with for a large chunk of the season. You're going to see here, this is a similar action to what UConn could run. And it's going to be for Barry right here. Sets initially kind of this cross screen down low. Um, it's basically turning into flex action. They get the switch, and now it's going to be an immediate pin down. And Purdue just, ought, so many times they get caught trailing. They get caught on defenders, or on offensive players' hips. Edie's going to be in drop coverage, and so he's going to try to force these mid-range shots. But if offensive players like Barry does here... Kind of is able to stop and pop from three. It's going to give them pretty good looks from there and something that Purdue would, is going to have to be good on. And it isn't always just Spencer um, and for off-ball movement. Like a lot of the other guys do get involved for UConn as well. And you're going to see that here. And so Caravan this whole time, he's going to do this handoff. He's going to get a back screen and immediately flow into Ricky action um, where it's just that back screen and then a pin down going the other way and now he curls it and so he can just read his defender if his defender cheats over this way he's probably going to flare it out to three if his, he knows his defender is going to be on his hip like he is here he's just going to curl it and get to a little bit of a floater or try to get to the rim and then just one more example here kind of of the the off-ball defense for Purdue and again I mean you can see here the off-ball movement from a season Heidi stands still for half a second and now he's going to be caught behind and it's just tough for, for Purdue players to be able to stay connected, stay on top. And they are always going to go over for the most part because they're going to try to funnel into Edie. And that happens here. And this is the shot that Purdue is fine with. But it's also a shot that UConn is going to be willing to take and also make. And it should be a very, very fun battle.